Hey guys, so when Gul'dan got his mini rework probably like six months ago, they buffed a lot of his W talents. And when they did that, I told a couple teams, I was like, hey, uh, I think we should be trying out this W build. And I tried it out for five or six games and dominated with it. And then I kind of just stopped playing it because if you're going to be picking Gul'dan, why are you picking him in the solo lane, right? So I then said essentially... I kind of just sat him aside, and every situation that I wanted to play Gul'dan in the solo lane, I just picked Zagara. Zagara would dominate, it would bully in the same way that solo Gul'dan would, um, and would push just as hard. And I was like, Zagara just is better than Gul'dan in every way. Well, after Zagara's been getting nerf after nerf after nerf, and Gul'dan just got these buffs to these W talents on um, this last patch, I was like... I'm going to give this a shot again, and I gave it several shots, and I failed a lot. But I found reasons why I failed, and I I fixed those, and I adjusted, and I worked on fixing that after, after the fact. So, the first reason why I would say you'd be picking a Gul'dan in the solo lane and going W build is to pick him on maps where there's stalemates. Maps like Brax's Holdout... Uh, and look how much of a bully I am already. Like, I am just out-damaging him from afar, and the second that he gets close range, then I just use Drain Life. It's it's crazy. So anyways, I, um, I bully a lot, and the way I'm bullying is pretty incredible. Like, the... I, I'm taking so... I'm doing so much structure damage, and I'm just watching bot lane on the minimap to make sure that the, um, the enemy team isn't going missing. The second they go missing, I need to back out, right? So I'm just bullying, and I'm pushing so hard, and that's really why you want to be playing Gul'dan in the solo lane, and there's several reasons why you might want to, but if there's a time where the enemies are playing a very safe laner, you, you oftentimes can't punish them. Say they're playing a Blaze, right? And all they do is when the minion wave gets to their, their area, they clear it, and then they, they wait, right? Minion wave gets there, they clear it, they wait. That's it. That's all they do. And I wanted to play someone who could punish that. Someone who could push so hard that if they just play safe and try to clear, they're going to lose stuff. And Zagaro is kind of my go-to for that. And I've seen people do it with Gul'dan. Or, sorry, uh, Gazlo. I've seen it people do it with other people. But I wanted to bring back the Gul'dan solo that I tried out in the past and I was dominating with. And then I told some other people and they said it was actually pretty good. Some... Uh, open division teams that were trying it out and that's really what i wanted to do was play this bully and you can see i'm still just destroying structure after structure and these structures give our team 125 experience it's not much but it's a decent amount and it also makes it to where it's hard for him to get these points for very long because i'm just pushing so we just keep bullying, we keep getting percentage on this, and again, it's a map with a lot of stalemates. So, And this also happens to be a map that I can get a lot of globes on, so the glo globe quest that I pick up. Uh, and I'll talk about the build as we get further into it, but essentially the level 1 talent I pick up is a globe quest. I don't actually do it for the quest reward, I do it for everything else that it says. The extra range and the bonus healing from regen globes. The more healing on regen globes makes it easier for me to stay in the lane against more aggressive solo laners because all I have to do is grab a globe and I'm getting a lot more health back. And as Gul'dan, health is what allows you to cast more abilities. The extra range allows you to be a little bit more of a bully and at level 4, the lower cooldown on your W allows you to keep draining off of people for more and more often to essentially out-trade other people. In the case of this Leoric, I actually can out-trade him uh, because eventually he'll run out of mana, and Drain Life doesn't actually cost mana. So all I have to do is keep draining on him, and I outheal the amount of damage he does with auto attacks and Ws. So he'll run out of mana much before I run out of health. The problem was I was more worried because a couple people went missing down bottom lane, and I didn't want to deal with multiple enemies. So same thing here, I'm out draining a lot of the damage and he will end up running out of health or mana by the time anything major happens. But you can see my cooldown comes back faster than his does and so I can really, really bully. Leoric's a lot harder to bully because every time that I use my W, I sit still, which is probably the biggest competitive disadvantage of a Gul'dan uh, in this particular 
uh, area. I, I go up here for the globe. It's pretty risky, but I, I thought it was worth it. I actually tap here so I can get a, an E off before my W to do the bonus damage to him. It's scary, but not quite. Again, I know how much damage he can do, so it's pretty easy for me to get out of these situations. And uh, so the biggest competitive disadvantage of this build is that when you get into the late game, you stand still for a long period of time. You can bully the majority of the soul laners you go against, which is pretty good. You can really push hard and do a lot of structure damage, which is also really good. But the biggest problem that I find is that uh, when you start reaching into the late game, you'll notice that you'll have a lot of issues where if you're standing still. So you'll notice that I start using my W as a bait for abilities. And I'm going to actually fast forward through a lot of this because uh, we Varian covers my lane for a little bit. I waited until uh, level 7 is when I can really bully the enemy. I just need to dodge one W, and it takes me a while to actually do this. So once I dodge one W, you're going to see how easy it is for me to take back this point. One W dodged, and there we go. I can melt him down at the bonus damage that I deal from the, uh, the drain and the U. And then we take this back. I push pretty hard, I bully him some more, I keep draining, I keep pushing, I've taken all the structures, so now we have a push without the enemies having any forts, okay? A ton of damage onto him again, and I try to take out their fountain, I get rid of their fountain. I'm just playing safe here, I drain, and then he tries to sleep, and I back up. That's my first bait, where I use my drain, and as someone tries to do something on it, I take a step back, and it's very easy for me to do that. So, same deal, uh, we're just we're just pushing away. And I'm fast forwarding, because I want to show you guys a couple games, I think. I like this also because this build of Gul'dan can do camps really easily when the other builds usually run out of health or mana too fast. This build you can easily drain, get your cooldown back, and then just keep pushing. Once I get this camp, I this was my answer to the Leoric problem. Leoric has enough wave clear to clear up a wave, but it doesn't have enough wave clear to clear up a camp. So I use this camp to kind of tank for me as I just bully him and start doing structure damage. And look at how much I'm doing to this. So you can't do a thing as I just take a full structure against him and I use my E to finish it off as I walk away. And that's it. You can just dominate people by just keep bullying them over and over and over. And... Uh, and that's it. I mean, that's that's pretty much... So I go down to help my team. I, I already pushed out the lane. They're going to be missing out on experience. Leoric shows up. I did not check his ult, and I panicked a little bit here. But I wanted to show you... Look at how much I'm healing really quick. As I do have my new talent at level 13, which allows me to heal for 75% more. And look at my health. Just shoots up. I should have just taken the fight here, but instead I use a Horrify, and I start pushing. This ends up costing our team a couple deaths. Because they end up, the Leoric ends up going down there and fighting. And I go up here and I just push. But uh, I do cover up all of the soak as well. Um, I don't want them to get any major advantage out of this. So out of the objectives that the enemies have, they don't really get much out of it. And I keep pushing. And it just keeps going. Start taking some structures for free. And so I want to show you that my hero damage is not very high against the Leoric, but I am still doing a ridiculous amount of siege damage. Even with the Leoric in lane, it doesn't really stop me. I just keep pushing. In this case, again, I don't know where all the enemies are. I, I push a little bit while I know, like when I can see a lot of the enemies, but when they go missing, you can see I just back out of it. And I don't mind joining my team for a little bit. And down here, we end up having a lot of fun i do my damage over time to both the jaina or sorry i do the q to the jaina damage over time onto the leoric and the drain it's a lot of single target damage we saw the crits there onto that i use a fear to get both of them out of position and then i take them out so even i i'm not only bullying but i also bring more to the team fight than a zagara does while I bully probably as much as a Zagara does at this point in the uh, the meta, I also bring a Horrify to team fights, which is something that Zagara does not bring. But you can see I can still play pretty aggressive, and and that was another time where I used my W and I 
turned it off early, walked away from the damage of the Li Ming, and then I went back in. So if you want to play this Gul'dan, there's a few things you need to watch for. You need to watch for the enemies, because you're going to be pushing so much, and you don't have an escape, that you're going to get ganked a lot. That's the first and most important thing. The second and most important thing is that you're going to be standing still a lot with your W, so you need to watch out for abilities that are a little bit scary. And, uh... And you need to try to bait them out a little bit. So in this case, uh, I'm going to fast forward through the rest of this. We pretty much don't... Well, we don't end here, but we pretty much just keep dominating them. I go, we take a couple camps, and then we take the objective, and then we take a camp and an objective, and we win the game with the camp and the objective. So I'm going to fast forward so we can still see the ending. Uh, I don't know why I didn't die there. They, they slept me and just went right past me. But again, it's just a ton of damage that you can do. I can horrify Jaina back into our team. I decide not to. Uh, I end up just horrifying the the Leoric away. Again, I probably should have just done the Jaina. Here we go in, deal some damage, do a lot of damage to my drain. I mean, look at that. Just the, the two corruption sets as well as one drain melts him down. Essentially from that, they were taking uh, 900 damage per second for the corruption and what is it 50% more than 268 uh, which is like 400 and something um, so they were essentially taking 400 DPS from this and I, I don't know uh, 900 divided by 6 I don't know he's taking a lot of damage I don't feel like doing the math right now it's actually really late so that is essentially that and again I do the damage over time to kill the Jaina, as well as I do the Drain to kill the Leoric. We channel both of those. I end up grabbing this camp up here. And we use the camp and the Zerg Rush and the amount of Siege that I can bring as a Gul'dan. I horrify her into the team. So let's talk about the build a little bit as we're finishing out this game. Uh, I will... Actually, I'll talk about it mostly next game, I think. So, we do finish out the game right here. There's only a minute left. We won't even need to go into that. I don't end up dying, but I, I just figured I want to get into this next game really quickly. So, we're going to go into this Sky Temple game. I make one major mistake, but this was one of the earlier games that I did. So, despite the mistake that I made, uh, I still think it's a really good example of showing how you can bully an enemy laner. So to talk about the build a little bit, I'll show you it when we get in game, but I'll talk about it here. It's mostly just W talents all the way down. There's a few tiers where you can change it up a little bit if you want to, but you'll see why it's still best to just go with the W talents. So the first one is the Q or sorry, the, the quest. And this quest makes it to where you can get uh, the more range. And again, I don't really pick this for completing the quest. The, Basic abilities cost 20% uh, less is not that great. I pick it for the regen glow because in the solo lane, there are going to be times where the enemy might win a trade and you need healing. And Gul'dan is one of those that he doesn't have a lot of health or mana regen. In fact, no no mana regen at all. So if you get caught with low, low mana and low health at the same time, Gul'dan's in a really rough spot. So being able to get 50% extra healing from a regen globe is not bad. So essentially, that's the first most important thing that I do on Gul'dan, is I pick that up for the range and the regen globe benefits. Level 4, we get the lowered cooldown. This allows you to really bully the enemies, and I don't know why we're taking this fight. It's pretty dumb. Um, especially since I... What I did on the other map where I killed the wave very quickly as it showed up, I wanted to do the same thing on this map, but it's not a big deal. As uh, despite the fact that we lose out on some deaths i can still stay in lane and be pretty much of a bully anyways so level four i pick up the health funnel it makes it where you reset the cooldown really easy and uh if you kill a minion then you get a full reset if you kill a, a camp you get a full reset if you kill an enemy you get a full reset or you just recharge your w 100 percent faster meaning that if you get the full drain it's on a four second cooldown and a drain on a four second cooldown is insane so it is pretty brutal uh, if you can get that drain going. And to start off, you can see this foul stat is not having a good day. 
Uh, I used an E in this direction, and if he would have jumped up this way, I would have used a Q and a W. And instead, he ran away in towards the E. I pretty much put everyone in a no-win situation. Their only real answer is to walk straight towards me and start doing damage, and I'll out-drain the damage that they do. So there's effectively no way to really win this. And uh, so I just kind of push the lane, keep my health and mana up. And the enemy Falstad is not going to know what hit him when I just start doing structure damage. Again, guys, a minute in the, minute 40 into this game, I'm halfway done with the structure. There's no one else that sieges like this who can have this safe of damage. I would say Sonya is probably the best bet of someone who can siege. But my team's just getting wrecked right now. That doesn't matter, though. Um, I would say, again, he competes with Zagara. It's a big option of you get a Zagara, but a Zagara that's better in team fights. L look at this trade here. Look at that trade. I I don't lose really any health, and he loses almost all of his health. And again, I just use my my uh, couple things, use my drain. My problem is I didn't pick up the talent first, or else I would have been able to reset the cooldown of my drain. And he stays. I don't know why he stays, but I use my E to get the bonus damage onto the, or the extra damage onto the, the tower. I drain off of a minion to get my health back, and then I use my Qs. Doesn't matter if he does anything. I'm, I'm actually at a net positive. He's losing out on at least mana out of that. And we just do some structure damage. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is how you bully in this lane. Is you not only, I'm not only pushing the foul set out. I'm probably costing me experience. And I'm also destroying all of his structures. So right here. Boom. Let's look at the experience contributed really quick. So I've not only did he participate in three kills on my team, and I've participated in none, meaning that he has that kill experience on me, but I'm still 600 experience, 700 experience over him. And I'm bullying him out of lane every time he shows up. And I've destroyed some structures so that the next time we get this objective, it's going to do more damage. And what do I do when this objective spawns? I get the objective. So that's what I wanted to show you about Gul'dan. I play this really wrong as I wait too long to use my drain and I don't do my E first. So I play it really, really poorly. And then I play it pretty poorly again. Uh, I drain him here, which again, look at how well I'm out trading him. It's insane. Um, and I end up using my Q, the first Q, a little too late. Which I think if I would have done a Q auto there, instead of letting that last drain go off, I would have killed him uh, before he killed me. But I live and I learn because, well, I guess in this case I died and I learned. Yeah, I, I died and I learned. Um, but anyways, so I want to show you, even as this game goes on, um, I bully this guy even more. And let me see if I can't fast forward through just a little bit more than this. So all of their friend structures are gone. I've already done a ton of damage. And look at how much damage he tries to trade me here. Look at that. He's pretty much dead. I'm at full mana. It's so easy for me to just drain. Look at that. Look at my health. So I can bully him. I end up taking this structure for free and goes on to uh, just, just joining the team after that. I start double soaking, joining the team and getting with them. This Infernal Shrines game, I end up taking like their entire front wall and keep and so much more. It was insane. So let me go over the entire build really quick and then we can go into... Uh, and then I can end off this video. So let me talk about it. And so the first thing that you do, you get this. It's for the range and the globes. That's it. You pick up this, lowers your cooldown, uh, allows you to really be a bully. Level 7, you pick up this, allows you to slow the enemies and do double the, or 50% more damage on your drain life. This is a must pick, all right? It's a must pick. I mean, I guess the flat 15% spell power will increase your E and your W and your Q damage. Um... And it only reduces the healing from your allies. And you're going to be healing. So I, I would say between these two. If you need more AoE damage for your team, go for Hunger for Power. If you need more single damage, go Curse for Exhaustion. Or if you want to bring CC to your team. Level 10, Horrify. Always Horrify. The fact that you can be like a Zagara, but bring an even better ult to the team fight. And Horrify is a stupidly good ult to bring to a team fight is huge. 
So not only are you bullying people in the solo lane, but you're also joining a team fight and just splitting their entire team up and getting kills. We saw how the Horrifies on that uh, Braxis game were getting kills left and right. Level 13, it's up to you, but we saw the value of Harvest Life healing 75% more health when using Drain Life on heroes. And I kind of feel like that's still a must pick to do is that Harvest Life. Although Hellstone is nice if the enemies have something like a Genji that's going to be diving on you. Uh, because if you drain life, he's going to deflect. And deflect will do more damage than you're going to be healing from drain life. So you'll need to turn off your heal and then use a health stone and then kill the Genji afterwards. Level 16, I feel like Darkness Within is the best call. You're going to be healing a ton, so Life Tap isn't going to be a big deal. And it increases the damage and healing of your next ability. So if you use Life Tap and then you use Drain, you're going to be healing way too much health for anyone to ever be able to deal with it. So you're pretty much like a Chen just sitting there and getting a bunch of shield, except for you're getting a bunch of healing instead. So Darkness Within is good. Level 20, I think Demonic Circle and Haunt both have their place. Haunt, if you're going to be finding a lot of team fights, and Demonic Circle, if you happen to be on a map like Dragonshire, where you may want to uh, channel top and then circle to the dragon really quick and pick it up without the enemies knowing that you traveled that fast. Or Demonic Circle can give you a global because you are going to be in the solo lane a lot. But Haunt in general is just a stupid good ult. Even if you remove the armor benefit, to have Horrify for an extra second is huge. That is the solo lane Gul'dan build that I have been... Well, I used to dominate with it. I've been struggling with it today, but I think it's mainly the team comms. The biggest thing I would tell you is if you are playing this, you need to play it in the same position that you'd be drafting a Phoenix or a Zagara, and you still need to have a pretty beefy tank, and then two damage and a support, or at least things that can do a decent amount of damage, because you're not going to be joining the team fights for a lot, and your W is going to bait out a lot of abilities on you, which means that you're not going to be able to do as much damage as a regular Gul'dan would do. That it doesn't mean that you should be throwing like your like double tank in your four man and expect you to hyper carry. You are a solo laner that does a decent amount of single target damage and has a decent ultimate ability. That is it. Uh, you are not a regular Gul'dan that's going to be hyper carrying the team. So if your team drafts correctly around it, it is a pretty interesting thing. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and feel free to check out my other videos.